All right, so we're checking out the uh, Aishin Tyro 79 Pro in this video. So this is um, pretty much like the original. There's a few differences, I'll point that out in this video. So also, there's some important information about this model. You're gonna wanna wait to hear about this later in the video if you are considering buying this. Um, it may alter your decision whether or not you wanna purchase this or not. Uh, basically, I did a video, I forget when, it was probably like two years ago on the original Tyro 79 and as the name indicates, the 79 is supposed to be for like the price of the quad, $79. Um, at the time, they had like a whole series of these, uh, Tyro 69, 79, 89, 99, etc. All, all those were basically price points. Obviously, components were a lot cheaper back then and all of these were DIY build it yourself uh, drones so uh, your people are, were looking for cheap parts and a you know, cheap drone to build it was a you know an okay option you know not the best of course you know very budget um, but now the price is a hundred and thirty dollars hundred twenty nine something so yeah it's fifty dollars more that is a lot more it's like eighty percent or seventy percent more than before of course that's all thanks to the component shortages and um, parts being hard to find, inflation, etc. Um, and the original Tyro 79 went through a number of different changes over the years. Um, different uh, gyros in the flight controller, different video transmitter, different cameras. And uh, again, they have uh, made another change in this one. I'm not sure why they made this the pro version because there's really not a whole lot different. Really all they did was they combined the um, 4 one ESC and the flight controller into a single board, which is what you see right here. So you have the video transmitter and you have a 4 one ESC and flight controller combo board now. The ESC is now rated to 35 amps, so maybe that's where the Pro comes from. Um, it is, I think the original was a 4 one 20 amp ESC, but this is a three inch prop, so, you know, not wasn't really necessary. BMI 270 gyro, of course, now on this one. They did upgrade the camera to the Runcam Nano 2. Uh, the original that I reviewed had some sort of generic camera, and I think they upgraded the Nano 2 at some point. Uh, but now the Pro version has this. Uh, no receiver, it's plug and play. I added my own Express LRS receiver here. This uh, does have some TPU parts that uh, some of them I use, some I didn't. So there's this like little part here for mounting your receiver, but I'd rather have mine up on top. So I didn't use this. Um, the motors are exactly the same. These are uh, 1607s at 2800 kV. The frame is the same, same bottom plate, same side plates. Uh, these little motor bumpers are, up, are um, new, these little TPU parts. But uh, they're not the greatest parts. So you can see here, if you use the included screws, they're gonna go right through this hole in the TPU. And then the screw is gonna be too long and you're gonna destroy your motor when you build this. So be careful that you don't do that. What I did was I just used two screws and I used a small washer there that you can see so that it does not pull through the TPU. And um, that seems to have done the trick. And you see the screw does not go all the way through that mounting point. If you, if you just let it go all the way through, don't use a washer there. It will go into the windings. Trust me, I got really close. I almost made that mistake. I, I'm very careful about that kind of stuff. So I made sure that I checked. Cause it's like, oh, it, it keeps on going. And then plus the, uh, once the screw goes through, then this uh, the little arm protector just falls off anyway. So it's kind of useless at that point. So I'm gonna make sure you do that. These little washers are not included. You have to try and, those are M2 washers. You have to try and find this somewhere. This is a design flaw. Or just use, I uh, don't use these at all. Just use a shorter screw and that'll be fine as well. Cause these didn't come with the original. Now, I'm not sure if these were the original props or not. These are these Racer Star 3-inch props. I don't remember. I, I have to go back and watch my old video, but didn't bother to do that. I was just kind of going off memory here. But those are eh, okay props. You know, there's all, obviously a lot of better 3-inch props out there. But for, you know, this sort of budget build, that's what they did. This, you know, again, with the motors being the same, the same plastic wires on the um, motor wires, which is not the greatest. And also you have the counter rotating nut prop nuts as well. Also not the greatest as well. The motor wires are too long. As you can see, there's plenty of excess motor wire there. And you, if you shorten them, then you're gonna have to get the, scrape the enamel off the copper windings or copper wires on the motor wires, which is a uh, big hassle. So that's uh, all stuff that's um, 
from before. Oh, and this little TPU part here is also new. That's not on the original. Uh, but basically, yeah, they just took two boards, shrunk it down to one. The VTX is still there. Um, but as you can see here, I don't have the props on here. I was all ready to go and fly this. Um, but the flight controller has a bad gyro on this one. So I probably should have plugged in the flight controller into Betaflight at first and checked to see if the, if the gyro was good or not. And I'll show you a little animation here, or not animation, a little video uh, screen grab of the uh, Betaflight configurator. When you plug it in and the plug into USB and the quad is completely still on the desk, not being touched. It is uh, jittering all over the place. So this is, it's basically from gyro noise, but uh, there's so much gyro noise, can't be fixed. I did try to increase the uh, gyro calibration limit, but that didn't help. Um, and without that, uh, the quad will not arm. So yeah, I did kind of waste a, whole, a lot of time building this and realizing, oh, the flight controller is no good. So I'm not gonna be able to fly this. However, there's, I don't expect this to fly any differently from the original because it's got the same motors. Um, yeah, it's got a slightly bigger EAC, but don't think that's gonna really matter that much. Um, yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of videos out there saying this, they're gonna claim this is the best ever, flies better than the original, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe it, it will. Um, Cause basically it's got the same motors, you know, 1607, 2800 KV, uh, same frame. So I, I don't really expect it to fly any different. So, you know, I'll show you some flight footage from the original. And this is probably what this is going to fly like. It's not going to be the different. The uh, Betaflight, of course, is newer. For whatever reason, they're using Betaflight 430, one of the old RC versions from December of 2021. I'm not sure why that's on there. So you're going to probably want to upgrade that. There were no custom PIDs or filters on there. Any anyway, it was just a default flash of Betaflight, so you might as well go to 431 and fly the default PIDs on that. It's probably going to be the same, um, but you're not going to have any weird issues. Anyway, just a quick note on the whole build process here. It's the same as the original. Um, basically, you want to, um, on the flight controller, you want to put everything, solder everything on first before you mount it to the frame. You can obviously mount it to the frame first if you want to. Uh, but I decided not to do that. I decided to uh, actually wire up everything on the flight, on the flight control before I mounted to the frame. And I did switch the um, way that they wanted you to set this up with UART 1 and UART 2. I put UART, I put the receiver on UART 1, which is on this side here, and the video transmitter smart audio on UART 2, which is over here. If you go to the product page, there's a link to the um, flight controller wiring diagram, so you can, you can uh, reference that. The build itself, pretty straightforward. I just soldered everything to the flight controller board, including the motors, um, and uh, you know, mounted to the frame. Uh, the video transfer just plugs in uh, once you solder that to the flight controller, and then the camera uh, solders to the flight controller. So it's pretty, it's a pretty simple build. And then I just soldered on the little Express LRS receiver here to the outside wires on on this UART one after everything was built. So the build is. Pretty easy. It didn't really take too long, maybe you know, like about an hour or so. And then, uh, of course, you have to solder in your XD30 and the um, the capacitor. And that's about it. And then, of course, mount everything to the frame and um, mount the camera to the frame. Honestly, you know, for the money, for $130, I think there's a lot of better options out there. You probably, unless you really want to build something to practice building, maybe this is an okay option in that regard because you know you can practice your soldering. Um, but I, honestly, I would spend the money on something like this here. I reviewed this recently. I think it was last week. This is a five inch. Um, it's a uh, already built. It's about ninety bucks. And uh, yeah, I did a video on this. You could watch that video. I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but essentially, it's already built and it costs uh, almost $40 less. So if you want to put smaller props in this one, I'm sure you can do it. I think a lot of people said at this KV, don't put the motor up, put them in on this one and run a four inch prop. You know, I think you'll have more fun than trying to build this one out, um, honestly. I, so anyway, go check out that video. I'll link it in the video description where you can check out my videos on my channel page. 
But that's, uh, that's all I'm gonna do in, in terms of this video here. Obviously, you can't fly it because it's defective. Um, you know, the flight controller came out of the box like this. I don't think I made any mistakes in terms of damaging the board or anything like that. It's, it looks totally fine. I didn't, there were no shorts or anything like that. The quad still fires up fine. Um, but yeah, you never get the three beeps at the end where it says that the gyro is calibrated. So let me uh, show you what I mean here. So there's the EC tones. And then here, at some point you should get the deet, deet, deet. And that never comes because the gyro is in constant uh, calibration mode. It's never it's never going to be able to calibrate because the gyro is defective. So it just sits here like this, and it will never actually give you the DTT, and it'll never arm until you get the three beeps at the end. That means the gyro is calibrated. Then it'll let you arm. You know, in this state, it won't let you arm. You can't fly it. So, fortunately, that's going to do it for this video. And, and uh, if you want to see flight footage of this one, check out my video from the original model. I'm sure it's going to fly. Exactly the same. Talk to you guys later.